number of square full arrays. Let's try to understand the problem first. So a square full array is the sum of every pair of adjacent elements in a is a perfect square. So this means, uh, for example, 1 plus 8, it is a pair, and it is equal to 9. So 9 equals to 3 times 3, so it is a perfect square. And 8 plus 17, it is 25. It equal to the square of 5, so it is also a perfect perfect square. So each pair is a perfect square, so we're going to yeah, count it as 1. And for another one, it's going to be 17, 8. It is a 25, 8 plus 1, it is 9. So this is another one, we're going to return a 2. And similarly for this one, 4 plus 4 equals to, 2 plus 2 equal to 4, 4 is the square of 2, and this 2 plus this 2 also equal to 4. So we're going to count it as 1 because there is no duplicate. Yeah, so we're going to solve two problems. Yeah, let's check the nums dot less. It is 12, and the nums i 10 to the power of 9. If it is like 12, so while we are solving this problem, if we, we can use a factorial of 12, yeah. But after using factorial of 12, we have to check the array inside, yeah, to check it like brute force, to check if it, it works or not. But this is a really uh, big number for factorial of 12. It is more than 10 to the power of 8. So we cannot use the brute force. And also, this is a hard problem. We cannot use brute force to solve it, yeah. Brute force is like we're going to use our permutation to permutate the nums. And for each one of the nums, we're going to check if it is a perfect yeah, if it is a perfect square or not. Yeah, for the array. If it is a perfect square full, if it is a square full array, we're going to count it by one and then check the next. But this is going to be time limit exceeded. Yeah. So this means we can use backtracking, but while using the backtracking, we need to also think about how to yeah, make the backtracking fast. Yeah, we can use the trimming or branching to make the backtracking fast because there's one situation, it is defined the square full pair, yeah, like one plus eight, it is nine. We have to prepare the array like that. And also we need to avoid the duplicate, because like this 2 and 2, if we use the backtracking, it may have duplicate, yeah. So, we can solve this problem similarly like solving the permutations 2 problem, because permutations 2, we, there's also a trick to avoid the duplicate, yeah. Let's first consider how to avoid the duplicate. So, for avoiding the duplicate while using the backtracking, we should consider this situation. If this nums i, if this i more than 0, and nums i equals to nums i minus 1. Yeah, we can use this condition to avoid the duplicate. Yeah. And this is because while we are using backtracking for each of the for loop inside of the for loop, for example, we're going to first check this 2, and then it is a tree structure. 2 will go to another 2 and another 2. And for the next tree structure, we will not choose the 2 because it will be the same. Yeah. To avoid the duplicate, we can use this condition. If this i is more than 0 and nums i equal to nums i minus 1, this means my current number is equal to the previous number. It means it is the same. I don't need to go for the backtracking. How should I avoid that? So I will just let it continue and will not check, will not do the backtracking. Yeah, I will later on explain it in the code. But firstly, how to avoid the duplicate. And uh, this is uh, case one. And uh, case two is uh, how to check a square. Yeah, how to check a perfect square. Yeah, and how to check if uh, a pair is a perfect square. So we're gonna yeah use uh, a condition. We're going to check, while we are using the backtracking, I'm going to prepare a parse array. So for the parse array, the last number in my parse array plus my current number, for example, I will use nums i. Yeah, so if it equals to, yeah, for example, this equal to maybe 9. Yeah, it is equal to 3 times 3. Yeah, 
3 square of 2. It means it is a perfect square. So I will go, go for the backtracking. So this is the condition for the backtracking, and this is also the trimming. And here is another trimming, while you avoid the duplicate. And here is the second trimming. So we're gonna check the conditions. If it is a square, if this, the last one, last number inside of the path, plus the current number of the nums i equal to a square a square full number, for example, this is 9 equal to yeah, square of 3. So we're going to continue, go for the backtracking. Yeah. And this condition is uh, if it is a duplicate. So we're going to jump, use a continue. Yeah. Now let's try to prepare the function. So first of all, I'm going to prepare a perfect square function. So the perfect square going to be a number. And I'm going to check if this number is a perfect square or not. Yeah. In Python, we can use a yes, we can use a power to check. So if a power int a number and we're gonna a square root of a number equal to this number, so we're gonna return true. For example, if this is a n equals to three and square root uh, if n equal to 9, so the square root of 9, it is a 3. Int 3, it is also 3. So the power with the 3 to 2, yeah, so the square root of 3 should equal to 9, and n is 9. Yeah, so this means it works. If n equals to 8, for example, the square root of n should equal to 2.7, but it is less than 3. So the int of 2.7 should be 2. So power of 2 and 2 should be 4. 4 not equal to 8, so it's going to be return false. So this is just for checking if a uh, number is a square square full number or not. Yeah. Yeah, so now let's try to define the backtracking function. So for the backtracking, inside, uh, we're going to prepare uh, nums inside, and this nums will be yeah, will be tickled one by one until this nums is an empty array. So we're going to return the, the result. And I also going to put a pass. So this pass means from the beginning it is empty. And then I will put all the numbers inside until I find a solution. Yeah. Now I'm going to give a pass first and try to call the backtracking. But before that, I'm going to define a global variable, self.result, as a 0. And then call the backtrack inside, it's going to be nums and empty array. And then I'm going to return this result. Yeah. Now let's continue to write the backtracking function. As I explained, we're going to check this nums. So if the nums is empty, so if not uh, nums, so this means there's nothing inside. So we're going to, it means we've already found a solution. So the result dot plus one, and we're gonna give a return. Yeah. So, so this is just to let the backtracking, let the recursive function stop from here. But let's go for the next one. Now we are going to check the for loop. So for i in range, we are going to check the numbers one by one. Uh, we are going to check this nums array one by one. So the first condition, as I explained here, we're going to first need to check the condition of duplicate. Yeah. So if this i is more than 0, and I find a number, so for example, I find a number 2 before it, it is also equal to 2. What I need to do, I need to avoid the duplicate. I need to use a, a continue to check the next i. Maybe it is not the same as before. For example, this is a 17, next maybe 8. It's not equal. Yeah, but while I'm using this condition, I have to use sort the nums array first. Otherwise, I will have problems. For example, if I don't sort the array, maybe there is a 2, 2. Yeah, and then it is a 1 and a 2 and a 2. Yeah, if I don't sort the array, I cannot totally avoid the duplicate. So it means I have to sort the array. If I sort, sort it, let me 
Yeah, so if I sort the array, it's going to be like 1, 2, 2, 2, and 2. So from here, it is the same. And here, it is also the same. And the last one, its own last pair, also the same. So it means I can avoid all the duplicate. Yeah, because it's the same. And for this one, so for example, from here, I avoid one duplicate. But here, it's not equal. But here, not equal. But here, it means only only two, only only two times I would avoid the duplicate. Yeah, because there's only two pairs meet the condition. But for this one, actually I need to avoid three times of the two. So this means I have to sort the array first. Yeah. So let's put the nums inside as a sorted. So we're gonna sort it the nums first. Otherwise we cannot avoid the duplicate as I explained here. Yeah. Now we're gonna check the conditions for the backtracking. So if uh, not pass, so means if it is from beginning, the path is empty. Yeah, and we don't need to check check if inside it is a square full pair or not. Because it is only there's no number inside. We're gonna first put the first number inside to, to check if it meets the condition or not. Yeah, so this is one condition. And another condition is if the path exists. So I'm gonna use this perfect square function to check if it is it. If it is a perfect square, so I'm gonna put the nums inside. Yeah, so inside it's gonna be the pass minus one plus my current number, it is the nums i. Yeah, so, so for this example, if this two plus two equal to four, four is a perfect square, so what I'm gonna do, I just need to call the backtrack. So inside, it's gonna be nums. I will take this number outside. So how can I take it outside? I will use a nums i to nums i plus one. Yeah, so this way is the slice of nums. So I will just, it means I will just take the nums i out. Yeah, but uh, while I take it out, I should prepare my pass. So my pass should append the nums i first. Yeah, and then I can take it out and use my new pass because here this pass already append the nums i. And then I need to pop it out because while you go backtracking, I need to take it out. Yeah, so for the backtracking, it is basically a stack. So first of all, I take it inside. If it meets the condition, I got the result. If it didn't meet the condition, I pop it out and go for the backtracking again. Yeah, so this is basically the entire code. Now let me run it to check if it works. So result, let's check where is the, here should be self.result. Yeah, now as you can see, it works. Now let me submit it to check if it can pass all the testing cases. Yeah, as you can see, it passed all the testing cases. Yeah, we cannot see how much percent, but let me try to submit again. Yeah, to check. Yeah, basically you can see it's 70%. It's basically, it's okay. Now let's check the time complexity. So the time complexity, as I explained earlier, it is the factorial of 12, factorial of n. But we used the trimming for this one for checking if it is a perfect square. And we also used this way, nums i equals to nums i minus 1 to avoid the duplicate. It means it's going to be faster. It can pass for the lead code. But for analyzing the time complexity, it is a still factorial of n. Yeah, but it is much faster than that because we use the trimming. And now let's check the space complexity. So for the space complexity, basically, uh, we just uh, used this pass array inside. Yeah, but we didn't put more didn't put more memory. Yeah, now let's let's try to check the memory like this this way first. Yeah. 
We didn't put too much memory because this is just ON. Yeah, the maximum length of the path is just ON. As you can see, the memory it is still OK. We can also change a little bit to make the code less, but this will influence the space complexity. Yeah, we can try to delete this path. And here, we can also delete it like that. And here, we're going to prepare a path. So this path, we're going to prepare plus an array. Yeah, basically, this is a copy. So it means we copy a whole array. So inside, it's going to be nums i. Yeah. yeah, because for this problem, we don't need to return the path. We only need to count the numbers. And it is so, but this is also a second way for the backtracking problem. We can use the path plus a uh, nums i. Now let's try to run it and to check if it works. As you can see, it works. Now let me submit it to check if, uh, yeah, it can pass. Yeah, as you can see, it also passed. Although it is a little bit uh, slower, but it is still okay. But this is the second way of preparing the backtracking. Yeah, backtracking function.